Joining me now, former Deputy Assistant Treasury Secretary, former White House Council of Economic Advisors, trade economist, and Mercatus Center Senior Fellow Christine McDaniel. Christine, these comments come in ahead of the first reading on uh, second quarter GDP on Thursday, and then, of course, the Federal Reserve's two day policy meeting set to start tomorrow. We get the decision on Wednesday. Your thoughts on what you're hearing out of, say, Larry Summers and Janet Yellen? Right, Jagan. Well, so we have, uh, I, I mean, Summers is obviously, I mean, everyone who looks at data over the history knows that um, it's very likely that we are going to be um, hitting a recession. You can call it what you want. I mean, we're, it, you know, you can't have a period of really, really high inflation, uh, meanwhile, low employment and, and uh, no recession. So we're, we're going to be contracting. The question is when. Uh, obviously, the Fed's been, um, you know, they, they want to do a soft landing. But the longer that they, the inflation keeps out of control, the harder that soft landing is going to be. And so um, policy Policymakers are you know, worried about unemployment, but the bigger concern really is inflation, right? People worry so much about unemployment, but even if we hit 10% unemployment, that just means one person, say out of every 10, um, who can work, uh, cannot find a job. But if you have big and high inflation, that means everybody's purchasing power is weakened. Uh, and so mm -hmm. we really need to get over this anxiety about unemployment um, and, and, you know, and, and the Fed needs to get control of inflation. Right. And the Fed, I'll point out, so it's expected to, be, you know, based on the reporting from Nick Timoros at the Wall Street Journal, the expectation is a 75 basis point rate hike. So that's two meetings, two back to back meetings and an increase of one and a half percentage points in the federal funds rate. It, that hadn't happened in about 40 years. So you got to go back and I mean, it just seems so basic that you let inflation explode and now you're going to have to get aggressive to do it. And the federal government uh, on the, you know, the Biden administration on the fiscal side is doing bupkis, not a niente, to help the Fed fight inflation. In fact, the Senate is expected to vote to advance this $280 billion bill to boost, th this is what they say, boost U.S. competition with China. This is $52 billion in subsidy funding for semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S., $24 billion in tax credits. This is a joke, and it's inflationary, and they have target picked an industry that's already loaded, highly lucrative, high margin business that they're given a handout to. It's, I can't, again, it's politics and thankfully I don't understand politics, but I do understand economics and this is bad for America. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it is the wrong policy at the wrong time. Um, the the key, the the root of market power in the semiconductor industry is is um, it's in the the design, the research and development, the intellectual property. And as you pointed out, the U.S. U.S. firms already have uh, quite a bit of a lead on all of those key areas. So we don't really need to put U.S. taxpayers on the hook for $76 billion to bring assembly of the chips to the U.S. Um, you know, that's not where the, the, um, the high value added is anyway. Um, and that's not going to help us compete with China. They really want to spend the money, do a uh, R&D tax credit across the board. Make it technology neutral or industry neutral. Don't put the government in the place of having to choose winners and losers. We know they're very bad at that. Or better yet, just save the $75, $76 billion. And Brandon, some Republicans are signing on to this in the Senate. Yeah, it's unbelievable. They've got yeah, a, that's, a that's what strong... Brandon, uh, Christine, I just want to bring Brandon in here. Brandon, go ahead. Oh, great. Oh, sorry about hey, that. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> so, yeah, it's amazing how much support they've gotten here. And, and it's such a bad policy, and there are good policies at their disposal. You know, Biden said all along while he was campaigning that if we were to cut tariffs, that the beneficiaries would be working Americans and American businesses, yet he has failed to do so. He's dragged his feet on this policy. And, Christine, I'm wondering if you can weigh in there. When he talks about infl fighting inflation, it seems like trade is one of the tools that he could implement. 
well, yeah, I mean, but now it's a little bit short and late for that. But yeah, obviously, cutting, uh, eliminating all the tariffs uh, could could probably shave, you know, half a percent, one and a half percentage points off off of inflation, according to the studies that you know that the best that are out there that I've seen. Uh, sure, of course. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Cut the tariffs. Um, but you know, that's hardly um, the uh, the going. That's not going to be a panacea. Uh, they should do the tariffs and about a few other major things. You know, stop this. You know, extreme spending. Uh, let the Fed do its job. Get over the anxiety of unemployment. We're probably going to have some. Um, and you know, and and, the, and just seventy-six billion dollars for one industry. You know, what's next? Think of it down a few years down the road. We're already seeing an economic slowdown. Um, mm -hmm. We're facing headwinds. We're seeing a glut of computer chips already. Why are we spending, putting taxpayers on the hook for this industry that's doing well and already is facing excessive in inventory? Christine, thank you so much for the insight. Christine McDaniel, I'll be beating my head on the desk in the commercial break because I don't understand it either. <laughs> bad policy. What does Maria say? Bad policy equals bad outcome.